was asked me the question that how can you prove that the glorious Quran is from Almighty God? Brother, I've given a lecture, is the Quran God's word? Which is about approximately two hours lecture for the question and session for another one and a half, two hours. We don't intend doing here, but surely I would ask one of the volunteers to give you that DVD, is the Quran God's word? Because even if I have to give in short, the answer will take at least 15, 20 minutes. Not that I'm running away from the answer. Okay, fine. At least in a few minutes, I'll just try. The time is short. That is the only thing. Suppose and ask this question to an atheist and even to a person who does not believe in the Quran, that suppose there is an object which is given to you who no one in the world has ever seen before and is brought in front of you and ask the question, who will be the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this object who no one in the world has seen? As I'm asking the question, suppose there is something which is brought in front of you. There's an equipment who no one in the world has seen before. And if I ask you the question, who will be the first person who will tell you the mechanism of this new object? Who? Creator, very good. Some will say creator, some will say manufacturer, some will say producer, some will say inventor, whatever it is keeping in your mind. Now I'll ask you the next question. That's how did our universe come into existence? The person of knowledge will tell us that first our universe was one primary nebula. Then there was a secondary separation, so the Big Bang, which gave us to galaxies, the stars, the sun, and the planet Earth on which we live. When did you come to know? He will tell you we came to know about 35 years back, 40 years back. Big Bang. Now this thing is mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, where it's mentioned, kafru. Do not the unbelievers see anna samawati wal arda kana that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. This Big Bang we're talking about is mentioned in the Quran in a nutshell 1400 years ago. Some will say, maybe it's a fluke. No problem, don't argue with it. I ask the next question. What is the shape of the earth? So the person will tell me that the shape of the earth is spherical. When I ask the question, when did you come to know? He will tell that recently, 100 years back, 200 years back, previously we thought that the earth is flat. It was in 1577 when Sir Francis Drake, he sailed around the earth and he proved that the earth was spherical. The Quran mentions 14 years ago in Surah Naziyat. Chapter number 79, verse number 30. Well, ard baad azalika dahaha. And thereafter, we have made the earth X shape. And today we know that the world is not completely round like a ball. It is geospherical in shape. It is starting from the pole and bulging from the center. And the Arabic word dahaha refers to the egg of an ostrich. And if you analyze the shape of an egg of an ostrich is geospherical in shape. Who could have mentioned that the earth is geospherical in shape in the Quran? 1400 years ago. Someone will say, okay, maybe a prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was very intelligent. Don't argue. Continue. When we ask the atheist or a person who doesn't believe in the Quran that the light of the moon, is it its own light or reflected light? So he will tell us that previously we thought that the light of the moon was its own light. Recently, 100 years back, 200 years back, we came to know that the light of the moon is reflected light of the sun. The Quran mentions in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse 61, that the light of the moon is borrowed light. It's described as munir or nur, borrowed light or reflected light. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran 14 years ago? When I was in school, I had learned that the earth and the moon, they revolved and they rotated. But the sun was stationary. It did not rotate about its own axis. Quran mentions in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 33, it is Allah who has created the night and the day. Washamsa wal kamar, the sun and the moon. Kullun fi faliki has bahun. Each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. The Quran says the sun and the moon, besides revolving, they're also rotating about their own axis. Today we have come to know that the sun takes approximately 25 days to complete one rotation. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran 1400 years ago that the sun rotates about its own axis? Furthermore, Recently, we came to know that the universe is expanding. It was Edwin Hubble who mentioned this. Quran mentions 14 years ago in Surah Dariyat, chapter 51, verse 47, that the universe is expanding. The Quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail 
in several places. The water evaporates from the ocean, rises up, forms into clouds, moves into the air, falls down the red in several places. In Surah Azumur chapter 39, verse 21. In Surah Mu'minun chapter 23, verse number 18. In Surah Rum chapter number 30, verse 24. In Surah Hijar chapter 15, verse 22. In Surah Nur chapter 24, verse 43. Again, go on and quoting only the references of the water cycle in the Quran. Who could have mentioned this? We came to know recently in our school, we are taught that Bernard Palissy was the first person who described the water cycle in 1580, which is mentioned in the Quran 14 years ago. Who could have mentioned this earlier? Now there'll be a big pause. I can go on. We did not know that the plants are sexist. Quran mentioned 14 years ago in Surah Taha chapter 20 verse 53 that the plants have sexist male and female. Recently, we have come to know that the two types of water, salt and sweet, and there's a barrier between them which cannot be trespassed. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Rahman, chapter 55, verse number 19 and 20. It's also mentioned in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse 53, about the same thing. The Quran speaks about embryology. The Quran speaks about medicine. The Quran speaks about genetics. I can go on and give a lecture of us together. Who could have mentioned this 14 years ago? Brother, who could have mentioned that? What's the answer? Who? Creator. Creator, creator, manufacturer, inventor, producer, this creator, this manufacturer, this inventor, we Muslims call as Allah, which you call as God. So this Quran can be proved scientifically that the word of God. Because Quran, the word of God is far superior to science. Today, science is the yardstick for many of them. I'm not trying to take the help of science. I'm using your yastik, science, along with my yastik, the Quran, which is far superior, and I'm trying to prove to you what your yastik has mentioned today, Quran has mentioned 14 years ago. So with the help of your yastik, the science, I'm trying to prove to the non-Muslims that the Quran is the last and final revelation of Almighty God, who we call as Allah. For more details, refer to my video cassette, Is the Quran God's Word, in which various ways I have proved that Quran is the word of God. Hope that answers the question. Thank you so much.